With so much to talk about in this one, I'm just gonna let it roll, so why don't we just dive in? This is Joshua Vergara, what's going on everybody? Here are my thoughts on the Pixel 6 Pro. For years, we got the same general style, not just from the mainline Pixel devices, but the A-series mid-range spin-offs. This year, we got a radical change, and for the most part, I think it was for the better. Different colors are available for the two different Pixel 6 variants, with my Pro coming in with this sorta of sunny colorway. This backing, though two-tone and generally eye-catching, is also very glossy in both look and feel. The most attention-grabbing feature on the backing, however, is definitely this reimagined camera module, which is a straight black bar across the upper third that might remind you of Captain Jordi LaForge. But I actually heard from Google peeps themselves that this bar is inspired by the Google search bar. Either way, I'll take it. It gives the phone a very distinct look. There's just one problem in the way that the phone was built, however. In both the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, we have very large screens. Now don't get me wrong, 2020 has gotten me to appreciate larger screens more than ever, but a 6.7 inch screen like this is personally pushing the boundaries. That screen is a gorgeous OLED with a high High refresh rate which is great but then you can see that there are these curves on the sides for some people these curves might actually be the difference in choosing between this or the flat screen of the pixel 6 which is still a pretty sizable device so it's large curved on both sides and glossy on the back so the pixel 6 pro is simply not the easiest phone to handle and if i'm honest seeing the other colorways in the wild actually got me wishing that i got either that cloudy white or that stormy black edition don't get me wrong the sort of sunny is definitely distinct among all of the other phones but orange and this almost peach color here on the bottom portion these just aren't really my jam Thankfully, it is pretty easy to put on a case, and you can definitely get some great ones from the sponsor of this video, Rhino Shield. Rhino Shield have a myriad of cases for the Pixel 6 Pro, but the two that I'm going to show off here are simple in both their design and function. The two I'm showing off here are the Solid Suit, which come in a myriad of different designs, but the two I have are the Solid Black and the Carbon, which puts a pattern on that backing. Here's a look at the two of them right now. Not to mention the case actually provides more grip that makes the phone feel much more secure. Just a little bit of texture or matted feel can go a long way. And with this huge camera bump at the top, the case makes those lines a bit more flush so that the camera isn't dragging on any surfaces that the phone might be sliding on. So I'm rocking the solid suit here and it is a great all around option. But there are also the Mod NX cases which have customizable bumpers and backing so that you can really personalize your final form. Now, as I said before, Rhino Shield have a ton of different designs for their many cases, some of which are actually partnerships with gaming and pop culture icons. Pac-Man, Riot Games, and Snoopy are just a few examples. Now, Rhino Shield is having their biggest sale of the year. The Black Friday promotion is going on right now, and all products are up to 60% off. But if you use the code JV10, you'll get an additional 10% off on top of all of that Black Friday savings. So make sure you use the link in the description below to browse all of Rhino Shield cases and accessories like the many that I have in my hand and the ones that are for the Pixel 6 Pro as you saw just now, making sure to use the code JV10 for an extra 10% off. Rhino Shield does ship worldwide and for free for qualifying orders and every product comes with a lifetime warranty. One last time, use the code JV10 at the link found in the description below and thank you Rhino Shield for sponsoring this video. Now, speaking of sizing up, the battery is larger, but somehow I feel like that hasn't really paid off as well as I hoped. While I haven't felt any battery anxiety while using this phone, I will say that I haven't really perceived it to be very above average. There's a 5000 milliamp hour battery in here, it is sizable, and it can be fast charged at up to a top level of 30 watts, but that's a ceiling that I do wish was much higher. So while the battery life isn't extraordinary, probably the most power hungry users and mainly gamers are going to actually feel that sting of what is otherwise otherwise an average experience. Getting below the surface, there is of course another elephant in the room, Google Tensor. We were all really curious as to how a Google-made processor would do on the daily. While we've known how well Google would inject their own software and features into existing SOCs, now everything is being done by them from the ground up. Everyday usage is smooth, it's all easy on the eyes and the feels, and typical app usage doesn't miss a beat. You should not expect this to be a gaming phone, however, so don't go expecting the greatest performance from the Pixel 6 Pro. That being said, the phone still addresses some of those needs by having things like low input lag and high refresh rate in this display. Now, I could never really max out on Genshin Impact, but it is constantly the most demanding game in the Play Store anyway. Meanwhile, titles like Wild Rift and Pokemon Unite were handled extremely easily, so 
gaming in general on here is a delight. And Google made sure to put the right stuff around Tensor as well. I've already mentioned this display, this good display a couple of times, but the speakers are also quite enjoyable with dual units, uh, providing loud and decently rich stereo. The only parts that I feel Google kind of whiffed on are the biometrics. Despite enhancements to the cameras, the front-facing shooter does not also have face unlock capabilities. And adding to that bit of a bummer is how the fingerprint reader just is not super fast. While some updates supposedly have been addressing this, and maybe it is generally good on the daily, I do find myself sometimes having to do one or two extra tries whenever I'm trying to get into my phone. Which is a little bit of a bummer because as one of the most helpful phones out there, a faster fingerprint reader and face unlock would have been really dope to see. Now, Pixels have always been known for just being fun yet very useful tools. Certain updates to the Pixel 6 Pro continue this trend. The simplest, but I find the most convenient thing is being able to hold the power button and to talk to Google Assistant walkie-talkie style, like so. What is the weather outside? With the phone in hand and a question in mind, this easily becomes a natural move. And because the phone is already in my hand, if I have to unlock the phone, I just have to use the fingerprint reader and hopefully it cooperates. That's better than being some ways away from the phone, hoping it knows what I said after saying, hey G, and then having to walk over to unlock it anyway. Other features you might already be familiar with, like call screening, which answers a call for you and transcribes the automated conversation so you know if you actually want to answer it or not. Most of the time, it's a no. Live captioning is a nice way of getting subtitles in places that might not already support them. And I do have to admit that I didn't really get into live translate yet, so I can't really say much about that. But what I did find myself really enjoying is live typing. In any application, you can hit the little mic icon on the side and it will remain active as you see your speech turned into pretty damn accurate text. Most of the time you can then be given commands like send or clear, so you never have to actually press anything if you follow the prompts. In places like Telegram, this is an obvious tool, but I can see myself using this on the fly in places like Notion or Google Keep to jot down thoughts or even skeleton scripts for my videos. Honestly, it's just really impressive. So a lot of the software in the Pixel 6 Pro is pretty incredible. It's useful, it's pretty easy to understand once you get a few of the nuances down, and they are features that do differentiate the Pixel from the rest of the pack. However, one thing that I do have to confess is that the launcher, and by that I mean the home screens and I guess the app drawer as well, eventually they just weren't really doing it for me anymore. While the underlying design choices of Android 12 and the Material U layers are very sound, I just eventually found myself miffed by how it is all rendered on this very large screen. It's not that the specific features aren't thoughtful. In picking a custom wallpaper, the software will then choose a few color schemes that might match it, making the colors of the quick settings, the notifications, uh, and the settings menus all fall in line. A cohesive color scheme is always going to be appreciated, especially when the wallpaper might be the centerpiece of all of your personalizations. Where things get a little weird though is when you realize that no matter what your scaling or grid settings are, there's just a bit too much space among all of the main elements of the home screens. I have fiddled around with all of the settings and I still can't find something that truly felt comfortable. I mean, this phone is already a little difficult for me to use just one-handed, so reaching farther usually means a bit more difficulty. I do think that Material U can be a great step forward, and like I said, some of the features are well thought out. It's just that putting that software on such a huge display makes things a little more difficult when this phone is supposed to be the epitome of helpfulness. But true to the spirit of Android, and supposedly what the supposed spirit of Material U was supposed to be, I knew that I could always just get another launcher. And you know what? That's exactly what I did. This is the before launcher. And while I might miss my Google Discover being over on the side, um, the Google app is just a tap away anyway. Even if the home screens and my app drawer are gonna be different, I still get some of the benefits of Material U because I made sure that the wallpaper inspired color scheme still matched. Honestly, it wasn't until I actually changed the launcher to something easier for me to handle that I actually found myself reaching for this phone way more often. As always, true personalization matters, whether it's with Material U or by just taking advantage of the real open nature of Android. Okay, let's finally talk about the cameras. Everyone was happy to see that Google finally decided to up the ante in terms of camera hardware, where we already knew that the software was going to do its magic. And the final result, while not quite as mind-blowing as we might have hoped, is still a leap forward. 
The main sensor is a 50 megapixel sensor that is going to be the one you want to use for most applications. I say that both because it definitely provides the best quality for both photo and video, but also because it has good autofocus and way better natural depth of field compared to the 12 megapixel shooters that the pixels used to have. The ultra wide camera is still useful mainly for stills when you want to get those more dramatic shots, though the megapixel count drops down to 12 megapixels. I have to say it's great to see the ultra wide continue to get love, especially after that infamous pixel announcement where they said zoom is more important. After all, the Pixel 6 doesn't even come with the zoom sensor, so it really comes down to whether or not you actually use zoom because apparently it's a pro feature. And you know what, with the Pixel processing, the pictures do usually come out quite good. I would advise against going well over the five times mark if you want to keep things looking as crisp as they should be. I won't wax too much poetic on the stills images because we know that these are still Pixel photos. There's great contrast. The sharpening might be a little strong at times and the colors are still rendered quite beautifully. The HDR processing, whether you're in a dedicated night mode or not, still makes for great low-light photography, especially if you're using the main sensor once again. And in the case of the Pixel 6 Pro, the wide front-facing camera makes for one of the best selfie takers in the game right now. If you just want good-looking self-portraits straight out of the camera, the Pixels are still my choice. And of course, that's not to mention all of the different editing tools that you have in the Google Photos app, which now get a few further enhancements. True Tone helps ensure skin tones across the spectrum are properly rendered, face on blur works to make sure faces of subjects potentially in motion are still clear, and to be honest, the motion modes can be fun to use, but they haven't hit that status of everyday use for me. In Google Photos, though, you get a tool now called the Magic Eraser, which is pretty dope. Much like the content-aware features in Photoshop, Google Photos will just identify items and subjects in the background, and it will try to replace them so it's like they were never there. Like these people in the background in this shot taken at a wedding, we just hit Erase All, and they are gone. You can also brush or draw circles around any parts that need to be removed. Now, as you can see here, the results can range from surprisingly effective to maybe somewhat smudgy messes. But you can actually say the same for a mostly automated Photoshop job. If anything, having this tool makes it so that I feel more confident taking pictures like this in situations where I'm not like totally isolated, both myself and the subject, because then I can always just go into Google Photos and remove those people walking by or who are in the background in post. Upgrades to the camera hardware got me really excited for how these cameras would fare in video. We know the stills would be incredible, but moving pictures are the bread and butter of the current social media landscape. On paper, things are looking pretty good. 4K video recording throughout, even with the front-facing camera and even with most of the video stabilization modes. But while the video is admittedly a leap forward in quality from previous generations, I think that the Pixel 6 Pro still falls in line with basically all current Android releases. It might not come as a surprise if you follow basically any smartphone, but to get the best results, again, you have to use that main sensor the most. I say that because I really hoped that the ultra wide would hold up, uh, but it's just not really up for the challenge. Even in medium lighting conditions, it can make it so that videos have more grain than they should. The main sensor is just the most capable of the bunch, especially in good lighting conditions. It's the one that I use for quick B-roll shots with things like the cinematic pan stabilization mode. It's just like using the S&Q mode on my actual mirrorless camera. And on top of video being a little less than mind-blowing, you could argue that the pixel processing and stills even is something that now needs to be tweaked to match this updated hardware. The reason being is because you can have the best hardware of all time, but if you're always churning out the same processing, the final products are just going to end up looking the same throughout. Added sharpening is different than just letting the camera put out crisp results, for example. The higher contrast is a good look, but sometimes it can contribute to saturations that look a little less than accurate. Again, Google Photos editing tools can always help all of this. It's just that Google's long-standing software prowess continues to be the main story, when really it should have been the better hardware complementing the software that should have been the entire deal. No one ever really thought that Google left the zeitgeist of high-quality smartphone experiences. On the contrary, the Pixel, across mainline releases and affordable A-series spin-offs, managed to remain really relevant, despite how much dust started to accumulate on some of the parts. But for years, we wondered if Google would just stick to what was considered safe or just middle of the road, and thankfully, the Pixel 6 marks a return for Google to the higher-end market. What might be most significant about this return, however, is how competitive they decided to be. This Pixel 6 Pro is definitely the higher tier device, sporting certain features like a better front-facing shooter, a zoom sensor, a more feature-filled display, um, and a bigger battery to sweeten the deal. But even without those extras, the Pixel 6 is still more than capable and starts at $599. 
No matter how you slice it, that price coupled with the term flagship doesn't always arrive together. So how about the fact that the Pixel 6 Pro is $899, bringing all of its hardware enhancements and honestly helpful Google assistance to the table, undercutting other high-end devices by at least one or $200. Even if it isn't the revelation that we all have hyped it up to be, the Pixel 6 Pro is still one of the easiest recommendations to make in the Android world. And the reasons why range from its tried and true photography skills to its unabashed googliness. Far less compromises need to be made this time around, and Google deserves credit for ensuring a really high price wasn't going to be one of them. So, taken all together, I'd say it's a good time to say welcome back to the fray, Pixel. Competition might be fiercer than ever, but it seems you're up for the challenge. For more on the Pixel 6 Pro, including my real-world camera test, hit the links appearing right now or are found below. Subscribe to my channel for more in the world of tech and sound off by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.